Hello, everyone. Welcome to this talk. Today, we will talk about email spoofing attacks. Email is widely used in our day life and is a frequently used attack vector for various attacks. In the past years, we have seen numerous attacks using email spoofing and phishing attacks to compromise enterprise networks or government official accounts. To address this problem, modern email services and websites deploy sender authentication protocols like SPF, DKM, and DMARC to prevent email forgery. In this work, we study those authentication protocols to understand whether they can really work as expected. I'm Jian Junchen, a postdoc at EGSI. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Wen Paxson, and Jian Jiang at F5. First, a quick question. When you receive an email, how do you tell whether it's a phishing email? Normally, we would check the from address displayed in the email client. If the from address is legitimate, we may believe it's not a phishing email. If we use email services like Gmail, we can also check additional security indicators like mailed by or signed by to verify the email sender. In this talk, we will present a number of new techniques to spoof those security fields. Here is a spoofing test I did several months ago. Gmail shows that the email was sent by security at facebook.com and verify the email was signed by facebook.com. But in fact, it was spoofed by me. How could it happen? Why Gmail didn't reject this message? We will answer those questions in this talk. To understand this, this attack, we need to know two important concepts in the email protocol, sender and authentication. Let's look at the first one. Here is the email example we often see in our day life. Who is the email sender? Actually, the from address we often see only represents the user who, who composed the message. There is another invariable part called the SMTP envelope. The hello and the mail from address in the SMTP envelope represent the user who transmitted the message. This design is similar to the mail in our real life. The address in the envelope and the address in the message data can be different. When SMTP is original design, it has a low built-in authentication mechanisms. Anyone on the internet can claim others' address in hello, mail from, or from field. For example, an attacker can claim he is Alice at a.com and send a spoofing email to Bob's receiving service directly. The receiving service cannot tell whether the email sender is really Alice at a.com. To address this problem, three sender authentication protocols, SPF, DKM, and DMARC, are developed. Let's quickly look at how those three protocols work. SPF uses IP address to authenticate the sender. It works in three steps. First, the sending service publishes authorized IP list in DNS record. Then the receiving service will query the domain in hello and mail from to obtain the IP list. Then it will check if the sender's IP matches with the IP list. If yes, SPF pass. So SPF ensures that only authorized IP can send the email for this domain. DKM uses public key cryptography to authenticate the sender. It works in four steps. First, the sending service publish public key in DNS record. Then, when sending an email, it will sign the message with the corresponding private key to generate a DKM signature header and attach it to the message. When receiving the email, the receiving service will query s.domainkey.d to obtain the public key. S and D are extracted from the DKM signature header. Domain key is a constant. Then it, the receiving service will validate the DKM signature with the obtained public key. If the signature is valid, the email pass DKM authentication. So DKM ensures that only the person who loads the private key can send the email for this domain. The problem of SPF and DKM is that neither of them validate the from address that is displayed to the end user which means even if a email pass both SPF and DKM authentication, the from address can still be spoofed. DMARC is designed to fix this problem. When the sending service deploys DMARC policy, the receiving service must perform identifier alignment test to check if the from header domain matches SPF or DKM verified domain. Matches means exactly match or has the same registered domain. Another important point is that DMARC only requires either SPF or DCAM to show a positive result. If both SPF and DCAM fails, DMARC fails, then the receiving service will 
enforce the policy specified by the sending service, such as rejecting the email. Here is the overview of the email authentication flow. When the receiving service receives an email, SPF component verify hello and mail from identifier, DKM component verify DKM signature header, DMA component verify whether the SPF or DKM verify domain align with the from header. If the email pass either SPF or DKM authentication and the from header pass the alignment test, then the email pass the DMARC authentication and then delivered to Bob's MUA. So the flow sounds good. What could possibly go wrong? We found 18 attacks to bypass the authentication. The key idea of our, task, our attacks exploits inconsistencies between different components. As shown in the picture, a email sent by Alice needs to be processed by at least six different components before reaching Bob. Those components are often built by different developers or even different companies and have a wide range of inconsistencies, which can be exploited by attackers. An attacker can craft ambiguous message with multiple identifiers. Component A may interpret one identifier, but component B may interpret another identifier. This can cause an exploitable semantic ambiguity and lead to authentication bypass. In the following talk, we will talk about several examples to illustrate the problem in detail. The first example exploits inconsistencies between DKM and DNS. This is the bug we demonstrated at the beginning of this talk. Here is how the attack works. First, the attacker constructs a spoofing message and assigns the message with his private key to generate the DKM signature header. In the DKM signature header, he specifies the D tag to be bank.com and S tag to be to include a null character. When receiving the email, the receiving the, the DKM component in the receiving service will query s.domainkey.d to obtain the public key. But when the DNS component resolves the domain, it takes the null character as the string terminator. So the public key is actually obtained from attack.com. So in this case, DKM will pass because the DKM component uses attacker's public key to verify attacker signed message. DMARC will pass because the DTAC domain is equal to the from header domain. The second example exploits inconsistencies between receiving service and email clients. To make, to make receiving service authenticate one identifier, but email client display another identifier to the end user. For example, an attacker can craft a message with two from headers. The receiving server recognizes the first from header and pass the DMARC authentication, but MUA display the second from header, which is unverified. We can also insert a wide space around the from header to create different variants. Different implementations may or may not recognize the wide space. For example, in this case, both receiving service and MUA prefer to the first header. The receiving service can recognize the 49 from header and verify attack.com, but the email client cannot recognize it and take admin at bank.com as the first valid from header. Another example is from alternative headers. Normally, only from header is used for email authentication and display, but if an attacker creates a, a message with no from header or an unrecognized from header. Some email client will display sender or resend from header value as the message sender. Even if there is only one header in the message, extracting a consistent email address from that header is an another challenge because of the complex syntax of from headers. Here is an example of a valid from header. Which one is the real address? Actually, only a at a.com is the real address. Secure bank is the display name. The content in the parentheses indicate a comment. At c.com, at, c, at d.com indicate a route portion. Apart from that, a from header can support multiple address list, base 16 encoding, coded pair, Unicode, and other features. 
The complexity of from header enables us to find a lot of inconsistencies. For example, for multiple address list, some implementations may take the first address, some implementations may take the second one. For address with a route portion, some implementations can correctly identify the real address, but some implementations don't support this feature and recognize a different address. For encoded address, some email client will display the decoded address, but some mail servers don't support encoding and recognize another address. Different implementations may also have different parsing behaviors, causing a lot of inconsistencies. Those are just several examples. We tested 10 email services and 19 email clients, and found 43 different combinations that could be exploited. Because of the limitation of black box testing, what we found is only a subset of the problem. We can further spoof DKM signatures to make the spoofing email more deceptive. Those attacks exploit inconsistencies between other comb combinations in the email processing chain. You can read details about these attacks in the paper. OK. The root cause of the problem is inconsistencies between different components. So to mitigate those attacks, we suggest email implementations should be strict in what you accept, rejecting any ambiguous cases that can cause inconsistencies. At a specification level, we should define simple message syntax and avoid multi-party processing. For email client, we should improve user interface display. Currently, most of the email client we tested don't display authentication results dis explicitly, which is difficult for the end users to check the authentication status. For the end users, we suggest don't blindly trust the email sender displays in the email client and use end-to-end -end authentication like PGP for verification. Although PGP may have may also have passing PGP passing ambiguities. Hopefully, it will be better than this one. We collected all the tested cases and put them in a tool we publish on GitHub for those interested to play around. Please check this link. OK, that's all about my presentation.